Hi, I'm Kyle with Stinger Electronics. Today I'm going to walk you through how to install a brand new Stinger Heighten infotainment system using a Jeep Wrangler specific installation kit. Whether you're a casual driver that wants an upgraded touchscreen radio with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, or an audiophile that wants the best sound quality for your car, the Stinger infotainment system is equipped with a ton of features in a clean, modern design, and the Jeep Wrangler specific installation kit will transform your dash to accommodate the new head unit. Before we begin installing, let's review what we'll need. Your Heighten installation kit, plastic pry tool, Phillips screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, cutter and crimper tool, socket, socket extension, ratchet, zip ties, crimp caps, and a microfiber cloth. Let's get started. Now that we've got everything we need, we're gonna begin with the disassembly. We're gonna take off the dash bezel, remove the radio, and remove this lower bezel as well to replace that cigarette lighter with our USB ports. We're gonna remove this lower knee bolster to get to two screws located behind the panel. If you need to raise the steering wheel, go ahead and release the lever, pull it up, lock the lever back in place. I'm gonna use the pry tool to pry that panel away. There's two screws, one on each side of the steering wheel that we're gonna to need to remove using your seven millimeter socket with the extension and your ratchet. Now we need to pop off the window switch. Just pull on it a little bit, sneak your plastic pry tool in the side, and put a little leverage on it, and it'll pop right out. There's a retaining clip on the connector behind the switch assembly. You release that clip with your plastic pry tool, and then disconnect the connector. There's another seven millimeter bolt right behind that. Now we need to remove the rubber insert in this top pocket. There's another seven millimeter bolt underneath that. Now we want to lower the steering wheel down to its lowest position, lock it in place, and we can remove the entire dash bezel. You can do that by simply grabbing the pocket and giving it a little tug. Set that in a safe spot on the counter or in the back seat. Now we're gonna remove this lower dash assembly to get to that cigarette lighter so we can swap it out with our USB ports. Grab your microfiber cloth and cover up your shifter knob to protect it from any scratches. Just give the panel a tug and it'll come right out. Now we can disconnect the four connectors behind the dash. Slide that on out. Now we can remove the radio. There's four seven millimeter screws holding that in. And this will now slide right out. You're gonna have to disconnect the connectors that are plugged into the back of the radio. There could be anywhere between three and four connectors plugged in. If you have a metal plate behind the radio here, you can take out two seven millimeter screws and slide it right out of the dash. Now that we have everything disassembled, we can head over to the bench and get all of our new parts prepped and ready for installation. Wiring is where most people get scared away from car stereo installs. However, it's actually pretty easy. We have the wiring harness from our kit here, and we have the Stinger radio harness here. As you can see, the wires are color coded, and 90% of the time, they will be connected color for color. Today we're using crimp caps, but you can use solder and heat shrink instead. As you can see, with the wiring harness that's included with the kit, you actually have two harnesses. So we're gonna cut the zip tie here, You'll only be using one of the two. You'll use the one that has a more rounded side of the connector here. 
toss the other one with a squared off connector to the side. When it comes to the radio harnesses, you'll need to grab two of them. One with all the camera inputs, and the other is the main power and speaker wiring harness. We'll be connecting both of these to the radio replacement interface harness. An additional harness that comes with the radio replacement interface is the steering wheel control adapter. It comes with a blue wire on it, as well as a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. For the Stinger radio, you'll just cap this wire off and this will be plugged into one of the ports on the back of the radio. We're now gonna connect most of the wires from the radio harness to the interface harness, color for color. We'll talk about the ones that aren't gonna be matched up color for color in just a moment. Here I've separated the speaker wires on the radio replacement harness and the radio harness away from the others. In most cases you'd connect these color for color, however if you have a factory amplified sound system like the Alpine system in your Wrangler, you'll have to connect the rear speakers from your radio to the front speakers on the radio replacement harness. The Wrangler that we're working on today does have a factory amplified sound system, so we're going to be connecting the greens to the whites and the purples to the grays and vice versa. Now that we've talked about your speaker wires and we've connected all the other wires color for color, there's gonna be a few left over that we will not match up color for color. That's gonna be the parking brake wire, the reverse wire, and the vehicle speed signal wire. It's gonna be the purple, the green with a white stripe, and on this other harness where the camera inputs are, the speed wire is blue. On the RP4 CH11 harness side, you're gonna have a red with white, a green and a purple with white. I've referenced the RP4 CH11 manual and it shows that the red with white wire is for parking brake output. So I'm going to connect that to the pink wire on the Stinger radio harness because that label shows parking brake. The next wire is the purple with white wire on the RP4 CH11 harness and that function is for vehicle speed signal. So I'm going to connect that to the blue wire on the camera harness for the Stinger radio, labeled speed. The last wire on the interface harness is green, and that function is reverse. So I'm gonna connect that to the green wire with the white stripe on the radio harness labeled reverse. Now that we have all of our wiring connected, I'm gonna tidy up the harnessing with a few zip ties. And there we have it, all of our wire harnessing is complete. 
The next step, we just want to make sure that the RP4CH11 interface is set up properly. To do that, we simply need to change the dial on the side to the selection number 4. This stands for Clarion Nakamichi style radios. And since the Stinger radio shares the Clarion layout for steering wheel controls, that's why we'll be setting it to number 4. You can use a small flathead screwdriver or a pick tool to change the dial. I'm using my little razor knife to, say, to change it today. Now that we have the dial selected for number four, we can cut the label off of the connector end so that we can plug it into our wire harnessing. That'll plug into this connector here. We also want to plug in the four pin connector for the steering wheel control. Now that we're finished with wiring, let's get the radio assembly mounted. You can use a regular Phillips screwdriver but I'm going to use a screw gun with a Phillips bit attached. The first step is take the radio brain and the metal bracket that comes provided. Align it like so and take the smallest screws from one of the bags that was in the Stinger radio kit and mount them together. You can adjust this bracket for depth, but we're going to put it at its flushest point. Now take the display mounting bracket, set it below the radio brain, and take the other two smaller screws and attach the bracket to the display bracket. Now we'll take our Wrangler brackets for the dash kit and align them left to right. Orient the Stinger radio assembly upside down. Then mount the dash kit brackets to the side. You can use the provided screws that came with the dash kit. We're going to slide the dash kit brackets pretty far forward so the display can sit as close to the dash as possible. Flip it to the other side and repeat. Now that this is assembled, we're ready to mount it to the vehicle. But before we do that, let's get the display ready. Now that we have the heightened screen and display mount laid out, we're going to mount them together. We've taken a look at the vehicle and we've decided that it looks best with the mounting bracket about a half of an inch from the bottom of the heightened screen. We're going to use the M4 machine thread 12 millimeter screws to mount the two together. One last thing before we head back to the vehicle, we're going to mount our new USB ports. We're going to take the spot of the factory cigarette lighter here and we're going to mount our two USB ports in the same location. To take out the factory cigarette lighter, look at it from the back and there's two plastic tabs that you'll need to pry away from the metal cigarette lighter. One on the top, one on the bottom. While applying pressure to the metal cigarette lighter, simply pry out on those with your flathead screwdriver. the metal will slide forward. Now it's just two more plastic tabs in order to release the plastic ring. We're gonna to put together our USB ports and attach this cover to retain the look of the factory cover on the cigarette lighter. Run the cables through the dash bezel. Flip it over and now we're going to mount the 
retaining rings. Slide the USB cords through the mounting ring. And these just twist onto secure. Make sure the front is lined up while you secure the last little bit. In order to ensure the first ring doesn't slip off, we're going to mount this other one right behind it. Now that we have all the pieces assembled, we're going to bring them over to the vehicle for installation. Now that we're back in the vehicle, the first thing we're going to do is reinstall the HVAC bezel that has our new USB ports installed. Just plug all the connectors back in. We're going to run the USBs up to the radio and snap the bezel back into place. You can just tuck the factory cigarette lighter connector back behind the dash because it won't be used anymore. You can tuck the excess cabling into the cavity behind the dash. Now we're going to mount the GPS antenna. The GPS antenna comes with this magnetic pad that has one sticky side. We can stick that to the plastic bracket in the dash right here, which held the factory GPS antenna if you were equipped with it. Just magnetize the antenna to the pad and run the cable down. We're gonna zip tie and tuck away the excess antenna wire. Now we're gonna install the wiring harness that we previously prepped over on the bench. Just tuck away the module in a cavity behind the radio as well. We also need to connect the antenna adapter that came with your kit. That'll plug into the white connector here. Now we're ready to plug in all remaining harnesses into the radio brain. We're gonna plug in the vehicle connections now to the radio. Starting with the antenna adapter. We wanna make sure to uncap the steering wheel control output adapter and connect it to the port labeled SWI. That stands for steering wheel control interface. Plug in your GPS antenna. Plug in your 10 pin camera harness. Your new USB ports. and now the main radio power connector. We need to make sure that the black plastic part of the radio brain is gonna be facing up and ensure that these two cords are coming to the front to, to connect to your display once we mount it. Now tuck the remaining harnesses all to the side in the dash to make way for the radio to slide into place. Now we can reinstall the factory seven millimeter bolts to hold the new dash kit in place. Now that we have the radio brain and dash kit fully mounted and all of our connections made, 
we can continue with reassembly. Now that we have everything fully reassembled, we can mount the radio screen and make sure everything's working. Now we're going to fire it up and make sure everything's working. All right, looks like it's turning on. Now it's all booted up. We're going to go through and test some functions. I got audio and you can actually change your audio settings by going into this menu here. You can turn loudness on and off. You can change your front and rear crossovers. You can go into the EQ and adjust your EQ settings. The speaker setting is where you can adjust fade and balance. And you can also access your time delay feature where you can adjust the distance of the speakers from the listening position of your head to give you the best overall sound in your vehicle. Go into volume and set your start volume. So if you wanted to automatically turn on at 10 on the volume scale, when you boot up your vehicle, it'll automatically do that instead of being on the last, or you can set it to be the last uh, volume setting you had it at. Here's where you access your uh, toss link output settings. You can tell it if it has an internal microphone that you're using or you're using the external microphone. Uh, and then you can access your source gain. So you can go to each individual source and adjust the uh, audio gain on those to be better matched to each other. Okay, there's a bunch of other settings you can access as well. By going here, you can adjust your camera settings. You can adjust your uh, style, like your background and your illumination color. Uh, you can go to your tabs and tell it what tabs you want to be displayed when you're on a, a menu such as uh, radio. So you can change these to be whatever you want. Here's your uh, camera source so you can show what cameras you have plugged in. If you have any plugged in, we don't have any plugged in right now, but you could access front camera, left camera, right camera, reverse camera, and also name them to be other cameras as well, like a bed camera and various others. Now we'll connect our iPhone and be able to test CarPlay. Once you're in CarPlay, you can access an entirely new interface where you can go to your apps, messages, phone logs, access your music streaming apps, and a plethora of other things like Waze navigation, Google Maps, Apple Maps. Having Apple CarPlay or Android Auto will transform every ride you take. I hope you enjoyed this installation video of the brand new Stinger Heighten. For more installation videos and the latest on Stinger Electronics, give us a follow on YouTube and check us out at stingerelectronics.com. <laughs>